Now another portion of scripture that the mockers will like to mock, you're in 1 Corinthians already, turn to chapter 14. Because these are some of the things that are going to get you attacked these days. In the day that we live in, there are certain doctrines in the Bible, there are certain statements, there are certain scriptural references that, that people just don't like. It rubs them wrong. They don't want to hear it. It goes against what our society and what our culture teaches is acceptable or normal or right or what have you. Okay, But the world is not what determines what's right and wrong. God is the one that determines that. And this is why we're even in church today, because we're looking at God's word. We're trying to decide for ourselves. We need to combat the wisdom of this world and get our head in this book to see, well, the world saying this, is that even true? Well, here's what the truth is. And here's a, here's a topic that is not popular. Even in churches today, this isn't very popular. But we're going to read the Bible before I even expound on it at all. We're just going to read it and think in yourself, you know, if, if you find yourself trying to make excuses or say, well, how can this possibly be? Look, it says what it says. Okay, the Bible says what it says. And I'm not going to stand up here and try to change it to mean something other than what you can clearly read for yourself. I don't really need to do any extra, ex, extra explanation on this passage. But we're going to start reading in verse number 34, 1 Corinthians 14. The Bible says, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, look at this, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. What we just read, again, without any of my take on this at all, because some people will say, oh, well, that Paul, he was, you know, he was a sexist, he was a misogynist, he didn't like women. What he was writing were the commandments of the Lord. This is God's word. In verse number 38 says, But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And that last verse is kind of what ties in with what I'm saying, avoiding foolish questions. Look, some people are just going to be ignorant. They're going to be asking stupid questions. Hey, if they're going to be ignorant, let them be ignorant. Okay? But people don't like to see this because what does our society tell us? Our society says men and women are equal. They're the same. Anything a man can do, a woman can do. Anything a woman can do, a man can do. And they're going to try to teach you that that's exactly the way it should be. Now, I do not think that men are better than women or women are better than men. It's not the value of the person, it's the role. It's very, very obvious that God made men and women different. There are very many physical, obvious differences between men and women we're different creatures and thank god for that because we go together very well but we have different functions that god has ordained for us to do with our lives the reason why men are physically stronger than women and that's the way that god has made us and i don't care who you are men are stronger than women it's because we are to be workers and providers and being able to support the family. That is the role that God has ordained for us. The reason why a, a female's anatomy is the way it is is because God has designed her to bear children, to be able to care for them, to be nurturing. Look, these are very innate attributes that are undeniable. And you take that and you continue to go and say, okay, well, God has ordained that the, the, the man is the, the leader in the household. You can't have two people with equal votes in charge all the time because what do you do with a disagreement? How do you resolve that? When you have two people and they each have a vote, I vote this, I vote this, you're going to have strife and contention. Someone needs to be the, 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 the final say-so in matters. Now, does that mean that, that the wife or the woman has, you know, can't provide input and, and everything else? No. Okay, that's not what the Bible says, but there is one person that's the authority that's in charge. 
And that's the way that God has ordained it. Now look, some people, it rubs them the wrong way. They don't like to hear that. They don't want to, they don't want to believe that. But how much do I really have to explain this passage that says, let your women keep silence in the churches because it's not permitted for them to speak? Okay, I'm not going to say that that means something other than what it just says. And I don't even feel like I need to explain that. Other than this fact. Now, I will explain it in this way. When it's talking about keeping silence in the churches, it continues on. It says, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. This is talking about during the learning time, during the preaching time, during this time where, where, where the pastor's up and teaching and giving his... Uh, giving the, the sermon or the teaching from the Bible, that is what's time. Because obviously, we have singing, right? We all gather together and we have congregational singing and the women sing and the men sing and there's nothing wrong with that. We have, um, you know, other times during announcements, right? When it's, there's no teaching going on, we're just kind of going over the things that are going on with the church. Look, that's not the teaching time. It's fine. But according to the Bible, when it's, when it's time to learn, when it's time to, get, to, to be taught, women are supposed to be silent in the church. And that's the way that we operate things here. And that's because of what Scripture says. And it is what it is. But, um, you know, a lot of people, again, the world today, that doesn't jive with the world. They'll be like, oh, how archaic. And they'll say, oh, you believe in Sharia law and all this other stuff. And you think women are less than, you know, less than you or all this other stuff. And that they're second class citizens. And all no, no. Actually, I think women are to be honored and, and respected. They have a very difficult job. They're very lovely creatures and, 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 and people that, that, that have immense value. We value women. And in fact, and this is how backwards and corrupt this world is. You know, we used to have a society and culture where men would open up the door for a woman. Men would pull out a chair and stand up when a woman comes in and push them in and sit down and show courtesy and manners and respect for women. But the society we live in today is teaching you, well, hey, everyone's equal. And we're sending women out to fight on a battlefield. That's wicked. Amen. 